Welcome! In this web tutorial we will teach you how to upgrade an AT8000S series switch using the web interface and a TFTP server. The switch models we'll be using will be the AT8000S family, which is a series of Layer 2 stackable switches. Each switch has a number of 10100 interfaces and gigabit uplinks. Before we upgrade the switch, let's make sure we have what we need. First off, we'll need a software release file, which is what we're going to upgrade the switch to. Then we'll need something called a TFTP server, which transfers the file to the switch. And then we're going to need a PC to run that TFTP server application on. All the software release files are found on the Ally Telesis restricted software site. From our website, highlight support and click software. Then click login to access restricted software. If you do not have a login, you'll need to create an account first. After logging in, click the drop down and select the switch model you're looking for. In this case, the 8000 series. The latest release file is usually found on top. In this case, 3.0.0.43 is the latest release. Verify that your switch model is listed. And if you want to know what's changed from this release, you can download the release notes. I'm going to download the software file here. And while that's downloading, let's talk about TFTP servers. In order to transfer the file from your computer to the switch, you will need a TFTP server application. There are plenty of them out there and most are easy to use, so go out there and start searching for one if you don't have one already. Alright, I'm going to launch my TFTP server. First thing I want to check is that the TFTP server's current directory is the directory where I placed that ROS file we downloaded, which is the release file for the 8000 series switch. This TFTP server also shows me that it's listening on my 192.168.1.2 interface, so it should be all ready to go. Ah, but first, let's look at what we're doing. Your computer is running a TFTP program, and it is now a TFTP server. Its job is to host files for other devices to upload or download to. It is commonly used to send software upgrades to switches or routers. In order for this to work, the computer and the switch have to be connected both physically and logically. Physically meaning you plug two ends of the same Ethernet cable into both the PC and the switch, and logically meaning they are in the same IP network. In my case, my switch has an IP address of 192.168.1.1 and my computer has an IP of 192.168.1.2. Once they have IP connectivity, we're going to connect to the switch using its IP address and tell it to grab the file off the server. The switch will then ask the server for the file, and the server should start setting the file along. It's always a good idea to test IP connectivity first, and the easiest way to do that is to ping from the computer to the switch. If you get a couple replies, you're good to go. Okay, now let's upgrade the switch. The remaining task is to connect to the switch and tell it where to download the new file from. Open up a web browser and type the switch's IP into the address bar. In my case, 192.168.1.1. Log in using the username and password you set up on the switch. Mine is still using the defaults. Once the interface is loaded, click on Utilities over on the left. This shows us that we're running software version 3.0.0.40. We downloaded 43. Click on File System, and then over on the right you'll see TFTP Operation. We're going to be downloading new firmware, so type in the source file name in the box. ATS 94-30043.ROS This is a software image, not a boot file. The TFTP server IP address is our PC's IP address, 192.168.1.2. 
I can see in my TFTP server over on the right that it's now seeing a file request and sending the data to the switch. When it's finished, a window should show up saying copy finished. Go ahead and click OK. Then over on the left, click on System Utilities again. You'll notice that the active image is image 2. The image we uploaded goes to image 1, the inactive image. So select image 1, then click Apply. Then we'll need to reboot the switch and it will be running the new image. So on the top right, click Reset, and then Reset again, and then OK on the pop-up. After the switch reboots, we'll need to log in again. Then, if everything worked correctly, we'll go to the Utilities section and see that it's now running Image 1, which is 30043. So anytime you upgrade, it upgrades to the non-active image. In this case, that would now be Image 2. Then you have to set the non-active image to active and reboot, and you're good to go. Well, I hope you have found this tutorial helpful. For more information on our hands-on classroom training, please visit www.alliedtelesis.com training.